Hey everybody, welcome back to McCamey Farm and Outdoors. My name's Brandon, I'm glad you're here with me today. We're back in the garage and I'm gonna go over some of the progress that's been made on the sawmill. We've uh, got a lot of things out of the way that are kind of, you know, very technical and minute and, and take a lot of time to get right. So uh, I haven't been rushing those and, and trying to get everything where it needs to be. But I wanted to show you all some of the progress that's been made and update you on what we've got done. The biggest accomplishment from the last video is the power feed that I've got completed. And it's a, uh, this is a jazzy wheelchair motor. And I've got a couple of idler sprockets, some number 40 chain and a gear here on the, uh, the motor shaft that drives down this piece of number 40 chain that's from one end to the other. So it basically, the motor will, will pull here and the idlers just direct the forward and reverse pattern. My biggest complaint, really then the only complaint that I have with these motors is the shaft for them. And it's a, like a 17 millimeter shaft which is a smooth shaft and then way out here you've got some threads. And so what I had to do, I had to buy a 17 millimeter sp uh, sprocket, but I couldn't find one in a, a number 40 chain tooth configuration. So I pretty much took the small um, 17 millimeter hub sprocket and cut the small sprocket off. Went to Tractor Supply and got a a number 40 sprocket and did a little bit of, of truing up and used a press to press that on there. And then I just tack welded it on that shaft. But it seems to be working great. Now I know this video is about my homemade sawmill, but I definitely think that this power feed option is, is something that you can do for uh, woodland mills or wood miser or any other type of sawmill. Uh, really, like I said, all I've got in this is the, the wheelchair motor, the 20 feet of chain, the two idler sprockets, and then my, my sprocket configuration I've made for the actual motor. Down here at the far end of the bed, I welded a piece of angle here and then took a 3 8 piece of all thread and made a tensioning rod for my, my chain that goes back to the carriage. And that way I can you know, take up the slack I wanna take up here. Uh, whatever I decide to do here, I can change that tension here. I just put a, a bolt through the end of it. I cut that and made a little notch in it to where I could put that bolt and secure it. And then did something likewise on the other end, but it's just a bolt and a nut. I'll, I'll do all my tensioning down here. And then of course this wiring is nowhere, nowhere near complete, but uh, this speed controller is what I've got it hooked up to. Um, and it's basically just a, an on off power switch that comes with a speed control dial. And then it's also got, once you turn it on, it's got a little digital readout that will tell you how much you've got. It'll go zero to a hundred. And then like I said, this is your forward and reverse. I'll put links to this in the description. And I've also got some, some limit switches here that I'm gonna incorporate the front and rear stops that I'll wire into this speed controller. That way if for some reason I trip and fall or something happens and I can't get back, it's not just gonna run off the tracks or keep going forward at the, the end of the rails.
first major upgrade, of course, are the band wheels that I've got mounted and in, in the proper place now. Um, everything lined up and tracking pretty decent. Uh, I've had some tension on it, but I've got, you know, like I said, everything lined up. The, uh, the band is the appropriate size. And by the way, this is a 171 inch, inch and a half band. It's a Wood Miser Turbo 747. So I've got my tensioner side pulley um, all mocked up and everything welded in place. And what I've done here, I've basically created a box around the two two by threes across the, the carriage frame here and boxed all that in, tacked it in. And I took some of this UHMW quarter inch plate and I bolted it to either side of the two by three to give it something to kind of ride on. Uh, and then like I said, I tacked everything in, this 3 16 plate, boxed it all in, and then pulled it off and, and welded it all together. And then down in here, I put this half inch plate right here to get my tension. And I'm gonna use this bottle jack here that I've got, it's a two ton. Uh, and, and pretty much it, it's just gonna apply pressure to the blade and put the, the proper tension on it. And it's very, very tight right now. Um, but I think, I think this blade requires like 1800 PSI pressure to keep it, keep it where it should be. So it's gonna require a lot. And then I can let the pressure off of it when I'm done. That way I'm not keeping that tension on the blade. Down here on the half inch plate, I put this piece of pipe right here. Just welded it in there just to, to be able for the bottle jack to, to have a place to ride where it doesn't try to kick out. At least it's gonna stay inside there once I put the pressure on it. And of course, just like most sawmills, I've got one side here that is the, the tension side that's adjustable that I can adjust my blade tension. And then of course this side is the, the fixed pulley side. So everything here is welded up solid. Uh, the only adjustment or movement I have here are the two adjustment bolts that I use to basically track the blade, toe in or toe out. So my next step is gonna be getting the motor 100% mounted. I've got the plate done for it and I've got my, my pulley on here. I've got to make a spacer for it to, to keep the clutch out here and then work on my, my idler pulley for my belt. And that should be just about all of it for the drive system. And then probably in that video, I'll also work on the, my guides. I've got to get that uh, configured. Now that I can put tension on it, and get my, my blade tight where it needs to be. Now I can get those, those guides in place and get those mounted up and secure. I'm gonna be going with the, the Cook's saw roller guides. These are, these are all pre-made with all your adjustments already built in, uh, zerk fittings on the bearings, and the roller guides. Everything is here, you basically weld your mounting points to these and get everything secure. But everything as far as rollers and guides and everything is, all of this is built into it with all your adjustment. All right guys, I think that's gonna be it for this video. Uh, I'm sure it's getting a little bit long at this point, but I truly appreciate you sticking around and, and going through this journey with me. Uh, to say I'm excited is an understatement. Um, I know this, you know, it's getting really close and I don't want to rush it. I want to make sure that I get everything, you know, done and done correctly, especially on these, uh, the roller guides. I want to make sure they're done right and everything's going to cut true. Um, as much as I'd like to take this thing over there and start sawing lumber, I, I want it to be, I want it to be right when I get it out there. But I appreciate y'all um, sticking around and going through this with me. And I hope you all have a great week, and I will catch you on the next one. We'll see you.